Domnul nostru Iesus Hristos, Fiul Tău, cuite cu tine de treia, în unitate Spiritul Sfânt de Deus, pe România secula secolului. Amin. Oremos să cuntiți nostru Iesus Domnului menti se corpuri de fel de periculis. Pe intercedente veata e gloriosa sempre vicini de Gentici și Maria, cum viata Iosef, viatis apostolii, tu, Ispetru, e Paolo, e Domnul Iisus Santis. Salute lor, Fiul Iisus, se face cu destructi de atrasitate, cu sete lor Iisus Universis. E Gresia tua, se curativi, servi, ad libertate. Deus, cui omnes, omnes, vi salvos fieri, e da danizione, in veritatis venire, Vite questum us operarios in me sentua, da eis cum omni fiducia loqui verbum tuum, ut servo tuus curat et clarificetur, et omnes centes coniocantes omnum deum verum, et coelisisti Iesum Christum filium tuum, Dominum nostrum, qui te cum divite trenia, in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. De exerviste le veati Paoli Apostoli ad Efesios Fratres, idete comodo caute amuletis, non quasi insipientes et puzzapientes redimentes tempus quoiandies malisum. Protere anolite fieri imprudentes et intelligentes quae si voluntas dei, e nolite inebriare vino, in quoes luxuria, sed in plebini Spiritus Santo, No quentes vobis metipsis in salmis et ignis et canticis de spiritualibus cantantes et salentes in cordibus vestis domino, gratias accentes semper et pro omnibus in nomine domini nostri, Iesu Christi, Deo e Patria, subiecti invicem in timore Christi. Deo gratia. Oculi omnium in tespera domine, e tu da silis escam in tempore opportuno aperis tu manum tuam et impres omne animal benedizione. Alleluia, alleluia, paratum cor meum Deus, paratum cor meum, cantavo et salam fidi, gloria mea, alleluia. Sunday after Pentecost.
Next Sunday is the Feast of Christ the King. It's the patronal feast of our chapel. We are having a, the low mass, but it is following. It is followed by um, a procession and benediction uh, with the Blessed Sacrament. And after the ceremonies, 10:30 mass, there will be also a potluck. If you would like to join us, if you would like to bring a dish to share. Also, next week we are having all souls days and, 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 and day. And then, uh, as it is customary, we offer the masses and the intentions uh, of the envelopes that you write with your loved ones. And this is going to be offered as a secondary intention every single Mass during the month of November, which is dedicated to the poor souls in purgatory. It is not necessary to put any, any, any uh, stipend, Mass stipend. You have to uh, bring the envelope with the names before the, 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 the old souls day. The epistle of today's Mass is taken from Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Brethren, see how you walk circumspectly, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, become not unwise, but understanding what is the will of God. And be not uh, drunk with wine, for in that is luxury, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost, the speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and spiritual canticles, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God and the Father, being subject one another in the fear of Christ. The please stand for today's Holy God, which is taken from the four chapters in John, verses 46 to 53. At that time there was a certain ruler whose son was sick at Capernaum. He, having heard that Jesus was come from Judea into Galilee, went to him and prayed him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Jesus therefore said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you believe not. The ruler said to him, Lord, come down before my son die. Jesus said to him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. The man believeth the word which Jesus said to him and went his way and as he was going down his servants met him and they brought word saying that this that his son lived he asked therefore of them the hour wherein they grew, he grew better and they said to him yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him the father therefore knew that it was at that same hour that Jesus said to him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed in his whole house. Thus far the words of today's holy gospel. Please be seated. Do not be drunk with wine, for in that is luxury. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. The sin of lust, from which the Apostle St. Paul warns us in today's epistle, as you know, is one of the seven capital sins and is very much spread in today's culture and without doubt is one of the most difficult vices to overcome by nature especially when it becomes a habit. This vice, as you know, is not only against the law of God, nine, the sixth and ninth commandment, but also it is the, against the right reason, which forbids the sexual pressure taken 
outside of, uh, of the uh, valid marriage. And this law of nature is in order to preserve man's <coughs> self-preservation. And the malice of this sin is understood from the Bible if you see how God has punished, especially in the Old Testament, as you remember, the destruction of the cities that were given up to the vice of the flesh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Another clear um, example of this gravity or punishment is, as you know, the spread of venereal diseases in the world is a truly a social scourge, which everyone knows. Isn't it the punishment of God for the sins of the flesh? Not to mention the self-destruction of society the, by the general practice of birth control. Entire generation disappearing and the evil consequences of lust lost upon society is evident as it destroyed entire families. Many young lives are completely ruined by this vice, by this slavery of luxury. Many souls are lost every day because of impurity. How many souls? Our Lady of Fatima, as you remember, said 100 years ago, more souls go to hell because of this, the sins of the flesh than for any other reason. But this is not all. The sin of the flesh has also a very evil effect upon the individual namely upon our mind and will, which very often we don't consider, very often we don't educate our children, even on the natural point of view, to stay away from this vice. And this is what we speak today about, the effect, evil effect of luxury upon our mind and our will. First of all, upon the effect of lust upon the mind. As you know, human personality is such that the intensity of an act has an effect on all the rest. And you see, for example, when you have uh, some worries, mental worries, the whole system is affected. You don't feel hungry, for example, or when you are so much focused on your studies, sometimes you forget the time, eating time, etc. The more intense the pressure of an action, the more it absorbs the whole attention and energy of man. So that, should it become a habit, it absorbs the whole man. Now, this is particularly true when the passions, inferior passions of um, human nature are exercised with violence. They become an obstacle for the normal exercise of superior faculties, intelligence and will. And you have examples of people, for example, imagine the passionate, compulsive gambler in the casino. He doesn't realize uh, the time passing by, he doesn't realize of the evil consequences of his laws. Many, sometimes, they will uh, gamble all their pennies. They will not have even the money to get back home. And you see clearly that their mind is affected, is completely drawn by the game, is blinded by passion. And so it is true with the passions of the flesh, or sensual passions, 
for they are very strong, both in the violence of his attractions and in the pleasure that they give. Therefore, it is logical that these passions, if not ordinate, they blind the intellect. And this happens in many different ways. For example, it prevents our distinguishing from good and evil. Beauty seduced you, <coughs> says the prophet Daniel to one of those judges who tried to commit adultery with the chaste Susan in the Old Testament. In effect, they were branded by lust. Those two judges of the people became perjurers and even murderers in their heart. Another example we have in the scripture of the prodigal son who could not understand the difference. He was blinded by this passion. He could not distinguish between the calm life and uh, that he had a home in the agitated and miserable life that followed the least device of impurity. And there too, he completely wasted all his money going after this passion. And the same we can see every day on the news. How many people acting out of passion lose their judgment. They break up their home. They destroy their reputation, their families, their spouse, their children. They waste their entire wealth sometimes. Many evils follow the vice of luxury. And when God abandons his soul to this vice, he becomes blind. And this is already the punishment of God. Secondly, lust stops us from thinking of the end of our action and the way to realize that end. It drags us down, making, our, making us act like animals without reflection, without thoughts. Finally, there is also in those people who live in the passion of luxury, a lack of consideration. And this is an act of the practical judgment that commands us what to do, what is our duties. And these people, lack of consideration in the sense that they become in constant in life they cannot focus, very often they take wrong decisions in their life. In addition to this blindness that provokes to our mind, the vice of impurity also turns the will aside entirely from our last end, weakening the will all the time. In fact, the will is the very helm of our life. With our will, we choose the end and the means to attain. Our end is God. The means are those means in order to attain the end. Now, by the vision, by the device of luxury, we separate ourselves from the end, from God. It becomes this passion, it becomes an end end of our actions, the end of our, our life, and attaining to this end, we need to take the means. What are those means? A spiritual means, prayer, sacraments, progress, spiritual life, virtuous life. All that is weakened and is disliking to the person who is given up to the, the passions of lust. They don't want even to hear about salvation or taking the means to that lead to salvation. And very often when we live a 
impure life, we end up hating God. We end up being resentful to everything that is spiritual. Because God in the church forbid those things. Just recently, last week in Argentina, there is an annual um, a protest march of feminists. More than 60 or 70,000 women they took a city break, basically, and they surrounded the downtown, the cathedral, and they wanted even to put the fire on the cathedral, not to mention all the blasphemy against God and the church. And why such a resentment? Why such a hatred? Because God and the church forbid the thing. As you see, there are many evil consequences of this virus, both for society and for individual. And therefore, we have to resolve ourselves for this serious reason to fight against lust, both interiorly and exteriorly, to become strong in virtue. Those who abandon themselves to the uh, vice of the flesh. They don't have true love. They have passion. They have self-love, self-pressure. And this becomes like a, a, a fixation in their life. And, and, and they can, the whole spiritual life decreases, diminishes. <coughs> They may not abandon the, 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 the faith entirely in the beginning, but little by little, by not frequenting the sacrament, by not making any effort to correct their life, they very often make up their own religion. They start sifting and, and choosing what to believe and what not to believe and become like Protestants. St. Ambrose says that as soon as a man begins to give himself up to impurity, then he begins also to turn away from the true faith. And we all know, even members of our family are fallen away Catholics or they abandon their religious practice precisely because of this passion. So we have to fight, we have to persevere, and the means to fight and overcome this strong passion, maybe one of the strongest, there are three means, efficacious means. First is to pray the rosary every day. Secondly is to frequent the sacraments every Sunday, at least, Confession and communion if needed. The third means is to avoid the occasion of sin. Things that uh, lead us into impurity, places where we may be tempted or person sometimes. If there is an obstacle to our salvation, to our souls, there is a high chance, a risk of compromise to your salvation, we must avoid it. May God and His Blessed Mother preserve us from this vice. Let it the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> Sunt, qui porte nos hominis de porte nostra salute de chenes. 
figlio tuo, del Spirito Santo, uno si Deo, uno si Dominus, non in unio singolarità di persone, se di unio su unità di sostanze. <coughs> Odeni in de tua gloria, revelante de credimus, o de figlio tuo, o de Spirito Santo, sine differenzia di sessione sentimus, in confessione vera e sentite nel predicatis, di persone proprietà se di essenza untas, e di maestati ad orecchie quantas, con talent angeli, acque, arcangeli, che lo vincuque sera fin, qui non c'è sanclamare quotidie una voce di cinque.
Domnul să te lase cu Domnul, Doamne, ori, în subiectul cu sărătare, cu spune, e de bine instituțiile formate, ori în ochii cele toate poste, cu ei sinceri, sanctifice de Domnul Dumnezeu, veni, a trebuit Dumnezeu, fie adunată să nu asigur din cerul din terra, Pane nostru, în cotidian, în istorie, fiind din Occidentea noastră, sigur de toți divitimus de viitorius nostris, el nu se ducă a schintentațiune în zeli de la noastră mare. Secula seculorum, pax domini sit, semper obiscum, et cum spenite de ochi. Panius de equitoris peccata mundi in misere nobis, Panius de equitoris peccata mundi in misere nobis, Panius de equitoris peccata mundi in torno in dispaccio. Ecce Agnus Dei, Ecce Cuitorit Pecata Lui, Domnului Nonu Sfântinius Dintre Respectul Meu, Se Tantum Di Perpo San Avitore Nomea, Domnului Nonu Sfântinius Dintre Respectul Meu, Se Tantum Di Perpo San Avitore Nomea, Domnului Nonu Sfântinius Dintre Respectul Meu, Se Tantum Di Perpo San Avitore Nomea.
Duhului Sfânt, vă rog, Domnule, în comitie, spende disti egne consolate est, în umilitate mea. Dominus obiscum, ne-am dosferit de tot. Oremus, un sacris Domnului e predamur digni muneribus, fac noscul sumul stui, semper obedire mandatis. Per Domnul nostru Iesum Christum, Filiul Tum, cui tecum din vite trenia Trinitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amin. Oremus, munde de munde nostru Iesum Domine, Divini Sacramenti, Muno Sogratum, et intercedente Beata Virgine Dei, Virgine Maria, cum Beata Iosef, Beatis Apostolis Tuis, Petro et Paolo Totico Santis, acuntis nostrela de adversitati vos espiatos et adversitati vos espiritos. Redemptionis nostre murire vegetati in questo vos Domini, ut hoc perpetuo salutis auxilio, fide semper vera proficiat. Per Domini nostri Gesù Cristo, un figlio tu, qui te convivite regna, in unità di Spirito, Santi Deus, per ogni secola seculorum. Amen. Domini subiscum, e tuo Spirito, Ite misa este, Deo Francis. Benedica vos, omnipotes Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Domino Sovis Cum, et Prospet, Inizio Sancti Evangelii secondo Ioane. Principio e verbo 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 e la luce spera che il lumine torna il fuoco di venire nel mondo. Nel mondo era il mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo primo mondo, spera che non fa con il suo per vivi con storie meglio che ben qua sono i genitori che ha fatto e per un grazie e per verità di Eurasia. Che in me di Polo Christ, per dove tutti in presa da un'altra, in presa di Cristo, per un grazie di Cristo. Che in me di Polo Christ, per dove tutti in presa da un'altra, in presa di Cristo, in presa di Cristo, per un grazie di Cristo. Praise the Lord with thee, blessed our Lamb, to whom and blessed is the fruit of thy Lord Jesus. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of God, and 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 Mother of God, Benata di Sara e Sara, sono tu a sottesco di un grado, Jesus. Oh, amen, for love in the sweet virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let me be the name of your God. Let us pray, O God, to refuge in our strength, to look down with favor upon the people who cry to you. And through the intercession of the glorious, the Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the great spouse, blessed Joseph, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, and all the saints, Mercy for the grace to secure the prayers which you put forth to thee, for the conversion of sinners, and for the liberty and exaltation of Holy Mother Church, who is saved Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, may our protection against the wickedness of the devil. May God be with you, my brethren, and with all the grace of the heavenly hosts and the power of God, cast into hell, sent in all the wicked spirits, and all the wicked spirits, and all the wicked spirits, and all the wicked spirits, who proud about the world, seek it as a soul. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. 
Most sacred heart of Jesus. Amen.